some years ago, I was at a youth retreat where they had now, a one of the great questions that people God the Creator should be obvious by the Gentiles. If you were looking down or Jesus from high lines of God the Creator. The Lord Jesus has a way of taking our little five loaves and two fish and doing amazing things with them that will absolutely flabbergast us someday. You know that. He says that when you're sowing seed, some seed gets stolen and some seed gets uh, choked and so on, but some seed produces 30, 60, 100 fold. 100 fold is 10,000% return on your investment. We were talking the other evening about a missionary who went to Angola in the early days there, just after Fred Stanley Arnott had opened up Angola, and how he was um, working in this particular area. He got blackwater fever a short time later, and as he was dying, missionary Tiernest Wilson uh, walked seven days through the jungle and held him in his arms as he watched this young Irishman ex expire and pass on to glory. Must I go and empty-handed? Must I meet my Savior so? Not one soul with which to greet him. Must I empty-handed go? Well, they had the funeral, and they went back to their own fields of labor. But sometime later, they heard that something was going on in this area, and they came and discovered, I think, close to 500 gatherings of believers in this region. The first one converted had been saved at the missionary's funeral and had led his friends to the Lord and others and others and others. And God says, well, not quite empty-handed after all. This is the kind of God we have. He says, if you give a cup of anything cold to one of the least of my disciples in the name of a disciple, it will not lose its reward. If you receive a righteous man in the name of a righteous man, you'll receive the reward of a righteous man. Can you imagine that? Like David went uh, after the burning of Ziklag and they went and got their stuff back and some people were so exhausted, they just stayed by the sleeping bags. They couldn't, they couldn't move. And, and so they went and did the battle and when the men came back, they said, well, we're not gonna split up the goods so these guys get some too, right? And David said, you sons of Belial, you worthless fellows, of course they will. They'll split it with the rest of us. There are people who've stayed home and looked after their old mothers instead of going to the mission field, and they feel like their life was a waste. Jesus says, I don't measure things the way people measure things. Listen, every one of us is going to be overwhelmed with the generosity of God on that day. There's nobody going to be sitting in the corner saying, poor little old me, I got the fuzzy end of the popsicle stick. God is going to bless us abundantly in that day because it's all of grace. And we could go and look at other scriptures that speak about this, but just to drive home this point, yes, there are things I've done. Let's be honest. One of the best things you can do for yourselves is be honest with yourself. There are things I've done that have been a waste, things I've done for self, things I've done that, that have been tawdry and shameful. Lord, I want them burned up. They're not sinful necessarily. I just went about it my own way instead of his way. Many a time he takes up those things and blesses them anyway, uses them in marvelous ways. But the fact is that there's a day coming when he's going to sort the whole thing out 
And anything that would be shameful to me, he's going to burn it. And anything that's been for his glory, he's going to multiply it in such fabulous ways, we'll stand back and say, he has done all things well. So I'm looking forward to the day. It's supposed to be an incentive program. Not because we're looking to get stuff for ourselves. I got more gold than you did. But that we will have the opportunity of declaring on that day, look what God was able to do with the little bit I put in his hand. All the glory will go to him. But I will be measured for my suit. I will be measured for my responsibilities in the coming kingdom based on faithfulness now. We can look at other passages that show how God's going to equalize the differences. We've had varying opportunity and varying ability, and the Lord gives us parables to explain how he's going to equalize that so that people aren't going to miss out because they were born in a Muslim village or because they didn't have access to a lot of the stuff that we have. To whom much is given, much will be required. But those who have little, God is able to magnify that little and to accomplish his purposes anyway. Just to say, we're not going to face our sin, it's all gone. But we are going to be assessed so that we can step into his coming kingdom and have responsibilities that are commensurate with the spiritual muscles we've developed in our obedience to the Lord at the present time. And he won't overload us with responsibilities then because he's so gracious and kind.